It's a good start. The Nifty above 17,550 odd. It's a 70 point cut from the highs, but still maintaining that green on the screens. Nifty has been in range through the day today. Uh, 17,500, twice it's gone there and twice it's seen buying from there. 17,600, it's gone there once and it's seen some selling there. Off the high closing, but still, I mean, 40 points, a quarter percent higher uh, on the uh, index, 17,528. Hello and welcome to Markets Today, the show where we track about six hours of the day's trading action in five key headlines. I'm Reema Tendulkar and these are the top headlines for the day. Stock markets end in the green even as the rupee plunges to a new low. The Sensex reclaims 59,000 despite some gains getting trimmed in late trade. HDFC twins gain as fears of outflows from the stock recede after NSE proposes a change in the reconstitution of indices following mergers and demergers. The proposal, if accepted, will see the stock exit the index not soon after the shareholders nod, but only on the X date. Vodafone Idea struggles continue as it loses subscribers for the 17th straight month. The company's board will meet later this week to consider issuing convertible debentures to a vendor. Nestle reports 18% quarterly domestic revenue growth, the highest in the last five years, but inflation continues to eat into margins. Ultratech posts a mixed bag. Revenue rises 16%, profits drop 42% and margins shrink. And the rupee sinks to a historic low against the dollar after the biggest single-day fall in over a month. One US dollar now costs more than 83 rupees. The Indian currency has lost 2% this month and 12% so far in 2022. And here's the line now, what we have for you in store today. It's a power pack show as always in market opinion. Rahul Arora, CEO of Nirmal Bang Institutional Equities. In Big Corporate Voices, Ajay Paramal, Chairman of Paramal Group. He expects a double-digit growth in Paramal Pharma in the coming quarters. But first up, taking the stock of the markets, the stock markets managed to eke out some gains despite the very sharp fall seen in the rupee in the last one hour. The Sensex and the Nifty did come under pressure in late trade, but did manage to close up in the grain. The gains were about 0.25%. The Sensex reclaimed that 59,000 mark, the Nifty gaining about 25 points. Banks and mid-caps also ending in the green. Prashant is here with the wrap. Prashant. I think the story of the Nifty mirrored what was happening in the rupee because vastly different sessions. The rupee started falling in the last 40-odd minutes of, or so uh, of uh, the equity trading session. And, you know, the market first ignored it and then reacted quite a bit, slipping into the red. By close, we were up for the day, but, uh, you know, a far cry from the first half of uh, today's trading session. I'll come to the rupee in a bit uh, from now, but uh, what came under pressure in terms of the selling was IT. Metals continue to lose three days on a trot now. And the PSU bank space, that index had done 8% in the last two sessions, saw some profit booking. Silver lining is Reliance. I mean, if Reliance continues to participate and pull its weight, that could help the market. Uh, in terms of large cap gains, HDFC started strong, uh, closed strong. Nestle, good numbers, uh, beat on all fronts. ITC, Axis and Bajaj were some of the other names. One is to one on advanced decline. Market breadth also deteriorated. Uh, names like LNT Technology Services, RT Industries, Astral, Data Patterns. You know, many had reported numbers, decent numbers like Gujarat Floro, but nevertheless saw profit booking. NHPC reversed yesterday's gains, Metro Brands, and a few more. Uh, what was doing well in the broader space were names like Container Corporation, again, news-related, Sinjin on the back of earnings, Campus Footwear, PNB Housing, VMart, etc. I think when you come back tomorrow, the dollar rupee stability will be important. We'll see uh, what happens there. The level on the Nifty to watch is the 61.8% retracement of the uh, September fall. We got there, but of course, are closing below it. That level is 17,581. And I think uh, global cues in terms of the rally uh, continuing will only add to the confidence of the bulls when we come back tomorrow. Back to you. Let's uh, get you some opinion. Uh, Prashant, thank you very much for that. Rahul Arora, CEO of Nirmal Bang Institutional Equity, says that pharma, cement, auto and auto ancillaries will see the bulk of his portfolio allocation. He also discussed his top bets within the pharma pack. Listen in. I think I'll be probably stay away from export-related stocks, uh, which includes IT as the biggest uh, sort of stay away factor from even though it's underperformed. Uh, I think it'll probably be more domestic. And I think our pecking order sector-wise, even though I was studying...
to be more stock specific, would probably be Pharma 1, Cement 2, Auto, Auto Angst 3 and Banks 4. I think it, if I was to play, if I was to make a portfolio for the next one year, that is probably where the bulk of my allocation would be. And I think within that, at least a third to 40% of my exposure would be in pharma. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you could probably have uh, the re remaining 60% divided equally amongst the other sectors. Cement is a very big play because you're one year away from a general election uh, when you get into the calendar. So I think government spending for in on infra projects and, and others is going to be quite material. If you look at the next five years, I think you have about $140 billion worth of branded genetics that are going off patent in the United States. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of these are very high competition drugs, so you're going to get into a very high pricing erosions kind of a scenario. Uh, so within pharma, I think unless you have a very strong R&D portfolio, uh, something like what a Sun Pharma has, uh, I'd probably stay away from U.S. tilted uh, pharmaceutical stocks. I think Sun has got a good blend of uh, both U.S. as well as India. Uh, so I think that would probably be one name that we would definitely play. The other would be Cipla. Uh, I think Cipla has got a very large domestic play. That is some uh, pharma bets. He likes Cipla, but he doesn't like Sun Pharma. In more opinion, Arvind Sanger, managing partner at Geosphere Capital Management, said that the market believes that inflation has peaked. He believes that earnings fundamentals in India look solid. Listen in. I think uh, certainly over the next few weeks it can get better. It looks like uh, the, at least global markets uh, were hugely oversold. And I think that uh, uh, we are in the midst of uh, the market thinking that uh, inflation has peaked and from here things can only get better. And therefore there's a bit of a oversold, hugely oversold, uh, uh, and investors were hugely underweight. So I think this rally has legs. I think that we're in the middle of this uh, uh, rally. What, I, what I'm unsure about is whether this is the end of the bear market or this is more of a bear market rally, which can be very powerful. But that's for global markets. For so India, I think you know uh, the fundamentals are better as long as inflation remains un under control. Uh, the rupee may you know may, may go sideways, may even improve slightly. Uh, and I think uh, the earning fundamentals and the earnings story this quarter seems to be off on a solid footing. So I think the fundamentals for the earnings current quarter and outlook for India look solid. So I think the market can, uh, in a global benign environment, the market can continue to do well. He expects the Indian markets to remain resilient. Now let's get to the second headline for the day. HDFC Limited and HDFC Bank gained between 1% to 3% as fears of outflows from the stock receded after NSC proposed a change in the reconstitution of indices following mergers and demergers. To understand this proposal and the implications for the two stocks, Nigel joins us for more details. Nigel. Well, uh, that's right. NSC has initiated consultation on the matter of reconstitution of indices in events of mergers and demergers. And the exchange has sought feedback by the next couple of weeks, that's 2nd of November. Currently, right after the shareholders' approval of the merger, the stock of the merging company is excluded from indices and replaced with a new stock. However, the proposal, if it's accepted, states that the stock will be removed, but not after the shareholder nod, but only on the X date. This will lead to passive holders automatically holding HDFC Bank as their name will come on record. The key rationale for this is it will address the longer exclusion as well as multiple adjustments to indices especially given the rise of ETFs and index funds. Additionally, the exchange will announce the new company to be included in the index on the X date. Novoma Alternate, well, they believe that now it's unlikely that HDFC gets excluded from the Nifty, which was earlier the fear, and they had earlier estimated $1.5 billion of outflows. Post this consultation paper and post the release from the exchange, well, a bit of a rally on the HDFC group. Okay, remember HDFC Limited has a near 5.6% weight in the Nifty and had it gotten deleted after the shareholder nod, as Nigel pointed out, it would have resulted in outflows of nearly $1.5 billion. At least that fear for now has receded. Thank you very much for explaining that. Let's get to the third headline for the day. As per the telecom regulator, in the month of August, Vodafone Idea has lost subscribers. They've lost nearly 20 lakh subscribers, making it the 17th straight month of losses. Reliance Geo, on the other hand, has added the most number of subscribers in the month gone by, in the month of August, adding close to about, uh, that number will come up for you on your screen, 
Reliance Jio has added the most at close to about 32 lakh subscribers, while for Bharti Airtel, it stands at 3.2 lakh subscribers. The fear in the market is that, you know, Vodafone Idea continues to lose subscribers. 17 straight months, and in the last 12 months, it's lost nearly 1.8 lakh subscribers. The street is worried about, will the company continue to lose subscribers? And if they need to defend their market share, they need money. And as of now, at least, money has been difficult to come by. They are planning a fundraise, a sort of a fundraise. They're issuing some securities to a vendor on the 21st of uh, this month. There is a board meeting which is scheduled wherein the company is going to propose the issuance of a convertible debenture to a vendor. Uh, but, you know, this is probably going to be money which will go back into the vendor. The vendor will issue some money. In lieu of that, they will get that convertible debentures, which can then be converted into equity at a later date. Fresh money into the company is unlikely to come through. And the risk is that if that doesn't happen, then the company continues to lose subscribers. Now, the company has identified 17 circles as priority. The balance six circles are not priority because it constitutes only 2% in terms of the revenue market share. But those six circles still have 1.6 cro uh, lakh, uh, sorry, 1.6 um, you know, crore subscribers out of a total base of 25 crore subscribers. So the street fears that these subscribers stand, uh, you know, the company stands to lose these subscribers. So that was a fear on Vodafone idea. Meanwhile, let's talk about Tata Communications that fell over half a percent despite a decent set of Q2 numbers. After a few sluggish ones, the international business is showing signs of picking up and the company holds on to its margin guidance of 23 to 25 percent. Amur S. Lakshmi Narayanan, the MD and the CEO, um, says that uh, they've seen significant margin improvement over the last three, three years. Margins were at 16 percent and now closer to 25 percent. And the next focus is on growth and they're looking at double-digit data growth. Listen in. Three years ago, we were you no know, 16% EBITDA margin, 7% uh, ROSI. Uh, today, you know, we've got it to 25%, uh, the ROSI to 27%, and, and good balance sheet with net debt reduction. So we call that as a, you know, the phase one of the transformation is done. Now we are focused on sort of the phase two, which is to get ourselves onto the path of growth. This quarter, we have had a very healthy growth on, uh, on the data. Uh, but last quarter was a little less. Uh, we are, you know, uh, converting better from our pipeline and our pipeline is increasing. Our international markets are beginning to show growth. Of all the markets, barring the two markets, uh, barring two markets, we have registered very, very good growth. And we would hope that when we fire on all cylinders in all the markets, uh, we should be uh, hitting the double digit growth uh, sooner than later. On that note, we'll slip into a break. We'll come back in a jiffy with the other headlines.